What's up, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Bittersweet Podcast. It's your girl, Wintana. And I'm Rahel. And we have a special guest in the studio today. Someone we've been trying to get on for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have Mona Khalifa, who is a fashion influencer, <laughs> beauty content creator. In the Bittersweet studio, sis, how are you? Hi, I'm very good, thank you. This is a stunning studio. <laughs> thank you. Like, the vibes are immaculate. Wow, thank you, sis. <laughs> Love. I'm so excited. This is not the first time we've actually collaborated with her. We did something earlier this year, but we were saying off camera, we would like last year, we were like, we have to get her on. And then another podcaster came in and swooped it, but we were speaking <laughs> about that. <laughs> Can I just say the panel that um, mm. you were on and obviously that you hosted, mm. amazing. It was literally like just that, that energy of like, it wasn't just women there, but like mostly um everyone just being like mm, yeah yeah the way yep. everyone was taking <laughs> yeah. it all in honestly like it, it was, was so beautiful I, I rarely go to events that are like all like black women mm, or like yeah. just empowering black women yeah. and stuff like that so to be in that kind of like environment was so it was just amazing and it was it's so needed like a lot of mm -hmm. w w came, women came in like just hoping to get advice or just see other people that are like killing it in their career and they're mm -hmm. like inspired by it so mm. it was a perfect way i feel like to start the year yeah exactly, exactly. Like just a nice kickstart nice motivator you see what other people are doing and you get inspired by beautiful black women just doing incredible exactly. stuff so shout out to you and so that. relatable yeah. as well oh, yeah. so i'd say like everyone on that panel it wasn't like because it was obviously a panel of very like accomplished people mm. but i didn't feel like you know there was comparison or anything like that it was more like well i can really like this is achievable because mm. i'm seeing it mm. so yeah. that and was i can learn from these girls as yeah. Well. yeah but how are you sis how's things going how's the new year treating i'm you? good january was first of all the longest freaking month of the entire like it actually why does it go on for like <laughs> seven weeks it was going on for so long i'm not gonna lie but i wasn't mad guys because why are we jumping to the next month i haven't even caught up yet no i was done with january like <laughs> week one i said mm -mm. i was in the middle of like uh like three hours away middle of victoria yeah and i said this is not where i belong <laughs> What I were was you in doing? The of nowhere. I was camping with the family, not like camping, not like tent camping. Okay. I'm black still. Yeah, I was. I was. I was cabin camping. <laughs> Sorry, like you're me, but I was like, no, I'm <laughs> camping. Are you? You're looking at me for that reason, yeah? Yeah, because I remember I invited her camping <laughs> once. No, like tents. It was literally tents, and oh, she, she didn't was tell like, me what the fuck. I, but I was like, I didn't know that that was a th like a thing. Like, there's no thing. no. I got there, and I'm like, hold up. <laughs> I was no, wait. So she didn't tell you it was gonna be tents. She just assumed I knew like this was the only type of camping. And for me, I'm thinking like cabins or like you know like you say you're camping, but oh you're actually in a house somewhere far away. No. And I get there, I'm like, bitch, are we camping <laughs> on the floor in the in tents? She's like, yes. <laughs> No, no, no. I could never do tents. Cabins was a stretch for me too. Because yeah. obviously the facilities aren't always the newest, yeah. the cleanest or anything like that. I can't do it, man. You're a bougie girl? Not b like just necessity. Standard, yeah. I'm a girl. I'm just a girl. Yeah, I'm just mm. a girl. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it? It was so lovely with the family. Yeah. It was actually really nice. Like we ended up staying another night extra just because like we were enjoying it so much. That's mm. nice. So... It was beautiful. My uncle was here from Sweden as well. So we got beautiful. to show him like a bit of the outback. But I always regret it at the end. You're like, I'm coming it's, yeah, it's, it's just not for me. Like I belong in a hotel. Yeah, I feel like I'm very much a city girl. But I can do the camping and the... Not the outback, but like just like, you know, just <laughs> the a little outback. bit. Like, of I just can do like, the camping. Not just like outback. certain types of camping. Or I can do like snow trip, for instance. I really want to do a snow trip. Snow trips year. are fun. S snow trip, know. that's like cabins and stuff yeah there's no strips are for like bougie people yeah it's expensive so that's why it's a white people maybe sport. that's why i feel like it's calling me because <laughs> i feel like i'm and you're seeing to be, everyone's I'm post right now right the maybe that's that what it is too <laughs> i need to get off so like i need to do a deep like cleanse mm -hmm. of social media because it's it really seeps into your subconscious yeah. like you don't even realize you the next thing you know you're like i want to do this and i need that and it's like you don't actually need that you don't actually want to do that but you've seen it so now you want to do you it you want to mm -hmm. do it crazy anyways we got so much that we're going to get into yeah. this episode first we want to play a game with you are you ready i don't know general knowledge no. and sis i don't know oh, i got my i was so knowledge. embarrassed last week but <laughs> yeah that was hilarious guys by the way i just basically woke up right so my brain isn't like i haven't finished my coffee so if just i get disclaimer. these answers wrong just disclaimer exactly <laughs> um i mean i get it it's a lot in the morning 
But again, I'm going to be the quiz master. Um, mm-hmm. So get ready, guys. I'm going to try. I tried to like mix it up this time. It's a whole tally. That's yours. That's <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, get wait. ready. <laughs> so um, I think you're going to write the answers on the on the thing, yeah? And then you're going to show... Guys, by the way, the I'm dyslexic. So... <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? Are you actually No, dyslexic? I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm dyslexic. So, is that spelling, right? You're going to have spelling, issues with spelling. all of that. Like, even comprehension. Yeah, and I write like a doctor, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> okay. It's just... Okay. It's full disclaimer. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So, we're going to start with the general knowledge. You don't have to write it down. If it just comes to your mind, it's going to be the first person who gets it is going to get the point. Mm-hmm. All right? So, but I'm going to start the timer anyway. Please. Just to add that little bit of extra pressure for you, for you girls. Yep. All right. So question number one. Which country is the capital of Can- Canada? Which what? country is the capital Sorry. of Canada? What's the capital of Canada? <laughs> That's my like. Yeah, it's your like, so coming up. What country is the capital? What city is the capital of Canada? Uh, uh, oh, uh, it's not Toronto. Is it? Is it it's Vancouver? Vancouver? No. <laughs> no, it's not Ottawa. No, yes. Ottawa's is it? Is yeah. it Ottawa? Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, what? I she just named like one. three cities. Yeah. Is that like a point? <laughs> yeah, it's a point. I mean, <laughs> sorry. think about it. Whoever gets there first. Whatever. Next question, please. <laughs> Make it geographical. Okay. <laughs> That's where I start. All right. <clears throat> where is the longest highway tunnel in the world situated? What? Where Ooh. is the longest highway tunnel in the world I like situated? I heard about this one. I, I literally feel like I heard about this one. Oh, Shiz, Shiz and Hell. <laughs> Don't show me it. Shiz and Hell. Um, <laughs> um, if I have to think about it, you it's going to take a random guess. The world's. Uh, can you give us a clue? Um, it's European. No. Oh, I saw it. <laughs> I knew it. I saw it. Don't you have family that are like a part of it? <laughs> Yeah, no, but I read about it. I don't it know, I feel recently. like that's kind of cheating, but, you know. <laughs> that's, that's okay, whatever. Come on. I, like I can see you sweating suit. I'm so You'll get all the maths ones, don't worry. <laughs> um, all right, so next question. Uh, what does a paleontologist study? Um, rocks? No, no, it's not. Um, paleontologist? Paleontologist. I know it. Paleontologist. Paleontologist? I know, I, I literally... Paleontologist. Is it the study, like, what do you mean, like, animals? What? What animal? It's not really... I don't know. If plants? <laughs> no, it's not plants. It's not an Paleontologist. animal. Paleontologist. Paleontologist. It's an, it's, it's an animal. Well, it's not an animal. Well, yeah, it's an animal. Dinosaurs. Bones. Dinosaur bones. What's Dinosaurs. that called? What uh, do you mean? I got I it right. What's then. that called? Um... Huh? Isn't that a... What do you mean? Isn't, isn't that, that called paleontologist? <laughs> <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Didn't you just say? Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, I said they study animals and you just said they study animals. It's, it's specific. It's not just animals. A paleontologist Fossils. doesn't just study... That's what nah. it was. Because I remember in the show I watched. What show? Um, What's the one with... Oh, the dad is the one that studies that kind of Friends? stuff. Friends? No, a, it's, no, it's not friends. Because he's the friends. Like, yeah, Ross does it. Yeah, he's an anthropologist. No, he's a paleontologist. No, he's he's a paleontologist. Isn't he an anthropologist? He studies, he studies rocks. No. Oh, oh yeah, well, he, rocks and that's fossils. That's what Joey tells him all the time. Yeah, like, like it's just rocks. I thought like he's, that. it was an anthropologist. No. No. Yeah. Why are you ready to laugh at me? <laughs> because <laughs> because yeah, she's like scandal. <laughs> sorry. Scandal. Her dad. Her dad. That's his like. All right. I'm Next up, yep. quick, quick, guys. Okay. Like, you just need okay, to sorry. Quick, 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 quick. Okay, sorry. You're, you're timing us. I know. Like, general knowledge is supposed to be like, <laughs> it's <not laughs> stressing okay, me out. I'm our sorry. brains are not on. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the, next, um, the next level is going to be mass. Uh, use your boards if you need. No, you no, know, I just don't believe to. you. Like, you came no. on on some, like, oh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, like, I'm not okay. a general knowledge girl, and then you just got two answers. When it comes you did, to you put three. The timer went off. Three. I'm taking it. This oh, is what no, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. It doesn't count that when the time. But she's still like the fact that she guessed it. It's like, mm-hmm. why did you say you don't know anything? No, yeah. no, no general. <laughs> I think that, that she did that on purpose. This is how I'll people say you are. I swear, Matt, me and Matt are not friends. I'll count with my fingers and embarrass myself. Because I said we'll look dumb together. It's fine. And then she's here like <laughs> fossils. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> You're like animals. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next question is, <clears throat> what is fifty three divided by four? Oh. oh my god, 53 divided by 4. Let me use my calculator. Yeah, 15 seconds. 50 you can't use your calculator. <laughs> um, you have 10 know. seconds. 
seven. Guys, six, no, this is five, too much maths. I can't even four, three. <laughs> like, oh, it's too early. You can't use your calculator, bitch. Did you use your calculator, <laughs> you little shies and house? I did the same thing and nothing came. <laughs> <laughs> I said, not today. I'm not no. about to embarrassed again. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm no. sitting right next to you. I can see Yeah, you. but it took you so long to see me. 13.25. 0.25. Oh, I just thought That's it was That's what it 13. says on the calculator. No, okay. It can't be because it's not an Eve. It's not a whole number. Yeah. All right. Done. So no, no. one gets so that, no point. One gets that okay. point. Like just So far, it's 2 zero. Even do science. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next question is, how many seconds are there in one day? Oh, bloody hell. Oh, how many seconds in one, in one day? <sighs> how many minutes in a day? That's how we break it down. I don't, Do you know even, I, don't, I don't even know how to break this down. 24 hours in a day. <laughs> I'm going to say... Uh, huh? Oh, uh, 400, wait, 400, wait, what did I 200, say? 200,000. Yeah, did you say 120? No, no, I, I was saying 1,024. <laughs> One thousand and twenty-four. One hundred thousand and twenty-four no. seconds in a day. One hundred thousand seconds in a day. One hundred and twenty-four thousand seconds. One hundred twenty-four thousand. What's your guess? Mm. Pretty much same. Hun- around hundred thousand. Apparently, it's eighty-six thousand four hundred. Imagine that. Do you know what? Though? That's not Imagine bad. To be honest, I feel like 80 f- eighty-six. It's not that crazy. It's not a crazy jump. From I mean, it is <laughs> considering we tried to do the maths for it. <laughs> that, that, that's a crazy I tried thing. and I stopped so quickly. Guys, this is so oh embarrassing. my god! Okay, next question. Um, all right, so the next one should be easy. I I say. Mm. So, what comes before quadrillion? Like, what number trillion. comes? Trillion. Trillion. Yeah. She gets that one. I feel like I get that one. Number one. Trillion. <laughs> So, so that's, Montana, one, that's two, one. I think you need You're to actually catching up now. No, no, I think you need to work on saying the questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, the quiz master is <laughs> the quiz you, you do need to work on that. Right now. <laughs> Damn, okay. Sorry for coming. <laughs> Do you um, know what though? I'm not even sorry because you always favor the guests on every what episode. Are you Whenever about? we do quizzes, me, I see no favoring. She favoring always you. is so nice. When, I was if, favored that other one would have been if, counted. If Montana <laughs> gets it wrong, she'll be like <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. not it. <laughs> and again, she's like, "Oh, is that what is that what you said?" Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's so annoying. All right, go. Um, all right. So, next question. This is the next segment that we're going into is spelling, all right? Oh. So, you'll have 20 seconds to spell entrepreneur. Oh, this is a hard one. Entre- oh. <coughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> You still have time. I can't. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Guys, this is actually anti Mona. <laughs> this is actually anti Mona. You still have four seconds. It's <laughs> not anti Mona. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I don't know if I got it right. You know what ruins spelling as well? What? Autocorrect. Oh, straight up. Oh, 100%. I don't anymore. 100%. Mm. I just. Do, 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 literally. Mm. Last, last week, I couldn't even spell camouflage. <laughs> 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 there were so many things I couldn't spell. And one uh, limousine. They're hard though. Who knows how to spell a limousine? Yeah. Yeah. Entrepreneur. E N T R E P R E N U E R. N E U R. Are you kidding? Yeah, so that's no point. Yeah. You, do you see how she does that? <laughs> but if it was you she'd be like, oh like oh, I guess okay. that's half a point. <laughs> we'll we'll like, it. Whatever, it's close. It's fine, it's fine. I don't want the point. I don't so want a petty point. Next up. Oh fuck. Spell. Are you ready? Yeah. This board is just here for decoration. <laughs> Spell Pharaoh. Oh, like Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Oh, mm-hmm. I think Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. Let's Pharaoh. see. Oh, are we, are we the same? Yeah, we're the same. Oh, is it? Yeah. A-I-A. No, we got it wrong. A. No, you guys are missing an A. Oh, see? Oh, Pharaoh. Yeah. Pharaoh. Where Pharaoh. is it? It's A O H. P H A R A O H. Oh, yeah. uh, so we're still we're still two one. Yep. Right. Yep. Is uh, that it? Well, there's no, that there's it? one more. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, you could it could be two two. It could tie. It could tie. This and then like just the do a general knowledge one after that. <laughs> just, just to like chuck <laughs> it in to do like a third. Just, just for the just difference. Yeah. All right. Next one is spell occurrence. Huh? Occurrence. Occurrence. 
occur at yeah yeah the first one let's see <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I can't A-N-C-E. see. It's your CCU. So O-C-C-U. R-A-N-C-E. It's, dub- it's double R. Oh, what? I knew there was something. That's autocorrect then. It's That's how you R. don't know. Yeah. How? Occurrence. No, guys, That's Rens. crazy, actually. Yeah. Guys, do you know how to spell vacuum? V-A-C-C-U-M-E. Yeah. No. Or e. V-A-C-C-U-M. U-M? It's no, it's V A C U U M. It's C. Crazy, huh? That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know if we need to go back in. to school. I just don't know. I don't know. Wait, if, so what? Are, what? what uh, occurrence is E N. Yeah. yeah. O C C E N C R R E N C E. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Okay. So was that? Did you get? So you got one. Yeah. And so I got two. one one. That's okay. <clears throat> That's all right. It's all right. You know what I mean? General knowledge just doesn't define how smart we are. Um, I'll be back next week. (laughs) (laughs) That's where I shine. General knowledge. You're basically... Who's on our leaderboard? You're you're the leaderboard. We're going to have a leaderboard now. Okay. And you are... You are... uh, Neil had one, right? Yeah. Can we have... How about like... Because two is a bit... You know, it's a bit sad. Mm. It is sad. Yeah. And I feel like they're going to beat it. Mm. Can we have like a... One more um, question or... Like a f- like something that was like ten points. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, for next time. For next time, we're that. not re- yeah, we're not <laughs> ready. But then that means they're just gonna smoke you. Everyone's gonna yeah. be waiting. Yeah, they, they can smoke me, and then I'll come back to. Smoke oh yeah, yeah. You. And then you're, you're Perfect. Right? Yeah. And then you'll add. <laughs> we love the mentality. See, look at her giving us ideas for the podcast. <laughs> Okay, let's get into this. Before we get into our topics, actually, we wanted to talk about you and talk about all the successes that you've achieved throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Um, For people who might not know you um, or have seen you and really want to hear from you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? It's always the hardest thing to sit there and just talk about yourself. Um, So I'm a content creator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Help me out here. I'll give you questions. <laughs> okay, like, how yeah, did you... Okay. So, you're a beauty and um, yes. beauty and fashion content creator. So, mm-hmm. when did you start creating content? Um, I started really as a lifestyle, lifestyle travel kind of blogger. Mm. So, it wasn't like a planned thing. It was like more accidental. Although I was posting... At the start when I had Instagram, you know, when it first came out and stuff. Yeah. I had only about like 3K followers. Yeah. And we were just... I was just chilling, just posting random fashion stuff. And then my sister and I, I was telling you on on the panel when in 2016, we were traveling, we did like a three month kind of like Europe tour, seeing all the family overseas and all that. And everyone was just watching on Snap. Like I had like 700,000, a million views on Snap. Like it was How did that happen? I know, how did did that happen? Because I don't understand Snapchat. Because I was oversharing. (laughs) But like to (laughs) to what extent where it was like, you know, like did it slowly build? No. I feel like that, at the, well, it, technically it's slowly built because I already kind of had like 3,000 on Insta and then a few thousand on Snap and I was just posting a lot of like makeup stuff and just going out, fashion and all that on Snap. Mm. Really cringy, mm. but it was there. And then when I was traveling, I was posting everything from the moment I woke up till nighttime and mm. all the crazy stuff that happened to us. So the real OGs know how insane that trip was. Yeah. So you were just like, from the start, were you, were you, did you have that like mentality of wanting to be an influencer or anything? Because I feel like Australia is kind of always slow to jump on the bandwagon of like anything, anything really. So it's like the content creator and the like influencer life is very, it was slow. Like I, we went to London in 2018 and I feel like Australia still had, like when we went there, people were just influencers Mm -hmm. and I was like, what do you mean you just like do that for your life? Like, how does that even make sense? So what year was it when you went to Europe? Um, 2016. And I wasn't take, like, that was just me posting because I wanted to post and I had the audience. Okay. Right. And then I came back from that trip and I had all these random modest brands messaging me like, oh my God, we love your platform. We love what you do. Da da da. And I'm like, but I'm just like doing me like it's not that deep. But I started doing like some of the, like they'll dress me for, like it wasn't anything money wise, like no monetary kind of gain, Mm -hmm. but I'll just, they'll just send me stuff. I'd wear it, I'd post it and all that stuff. And then uh, 2017, I was still, no, did I travel? Yeah, I did. And then posted the same, nothing serious. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Sorry. And then every time like a brand would come, usually in the modest world, it would be like just for a, 
couple hundred there that I still did not take it seriously. Mm. It wasn't until probably 2019, 2020 yeah, that I was okay, taking that it like decided that. a little bit more serious. Yeah. That's so interesting because mm-hmm. I told you even on the panel, um, I did abroad, I did studied abroad in 2018, 2019 yeah. and there were girls in my class in London that were like, oh, you're from Australia. Do you know Mona Khalifa? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that is insane. It's crazy. crazy. It's so wild. So it's crazy that you weren't even taking it seriously like that until later. At yeah. all. Like I was just posting like just to post like mm. honestly because I genuinely do love it and like I enjoy what I do. So, so ha- yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was gonna. Have you have you noticed like different opportunities that have come since you had that kind of mindset switch, and has it been more stressful or like have do you feel like you've had to really put everything in it, and has that been like I just th- going from doing it like casually yeah, to doing it, it like yeah, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> take this seriously? What type of like challenges came with that? I feel like it's definitely a switch, like because once you you know change your mindset and like put things out there in the universe things Mm -hmm. you know start coming or like you see more hurdles and stuff like that before I wasn't taking it seriously so I wasn't taking uh, like all the kind of like barriers that we do have here as black women in Australia into consideration and then now I do see like some sort of like barriers and I'm trying to like push through those (coughs) sorry barriers Mm. um in our industry which you know is very it's um, really hard yeah it's really hard it's very tiny and like we're either tokens or not there at all right and so once that once I had that change of mindset and I had like um, agencies coming through, I was like, no, we got to actually do this. And it mm. became work kind of thing. I still yeah. enjoy it, obviously, but it was like more like there was a bigger purpose than me just having a laugh. Yeah. Mm. So what was that like when you finally found out? You're like, all right, this is actually I can make a living out of this. Mm-hmm. What point was that? And yeah, what was that whole switch up like? I think that was more like 2021. Mm. That's when I signed with the agency I'm with right now, right? Um, before I had an agency, but that was like still up and down and I still wasn't really taking it seriously. And I don't think they even understood what to do with a black hijabi mm. in Australia because mm. it was new then, let alone be it being yeah. new right now. Yeah. Um, and then when I was like booking the jobs that this agency, you know, um, allowed me to book and gave me these kind of opportunities when I was like oh wait Mm. maybe I can actually make something out of it in this country because at the start I was like you guys like no there's no hope in Australia Mm. like we're so far behind I don't even know if we're gonna you know break through any barriers down here and all that but I think that was when I was like okay maybe we can make it and the opportunities are coming through Mm. I just have to actually take them seriously Mm. and work on it myself so Mm. you already because you have a pretty big platform and you had already built your platform to because 20 you said 2021 or 2022 2021 is when I officially started yes when I signed but I was oh sorry I was taking the opportunities uh, okay because you had you already had a platform by then okay Mm. so you already basically built yourself and this platform interesting Mm -hmm. it's crazy that you were able to like so kind of like effortlessly build something that people now like do put in so much to be able to you know get to that level but I think it's different like posting and stuff like you were and then doing it with intention and like getting jobs Mm -hmm. and da 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 because a lot of that takes an extra amount Mm. of work after that Mm -hmm. also just like being in Australia like I see the UK girls and I'm looking at people who actually dedicate their platform to like fashion content mm. like you've got your Mario Musas, your adiola patron mm-hmm. all those girls but we just don't have that here like there's actually right. not a lot of us there's like i can think of maybe like three or four girls in terms of black girls yeah that's yeah. what i mean black yeah, girls yeah. yeah black girls that are doing it in this space mm-hmm. and have like a really like high following profile and have, have a career out of it yeah, mm. it's, yeah. it's incredibly hard like uh, Every time I even see, like, go to events, which is why I really love the event that yeah. you, the panel that you did, because just going in there and seeing people like that are like minded, like similar kind of backgrounds, and like, I don't have to, you know, well, when they ask me where I'm from, if I say Eritrea, it's not like, huh? Where's where that? Where's yeah. that? Like, what's that? Like, just be feeling like home. Mm. Like, every single time I go like these kind of events, I'm either the only black girl or the only hijabi. Like, there's never really a space like like we're not allowed like when all the black girls sorry go to these kind of events like they have the light skin they have me as a black hijabi and then they have someone dark skin that's crazy they picked that's their token exactly. yeah. so it's like they know check, check the and box and that's all they allow mm. that's crazy which is insane mm. um but 
yeah we just gotta push through that's yeah. why we, like i love getting to know the other black girls down here mm. um in the industry whether they're muslim or not muslim and then when we see each other events support each other yeah and make sure we you know um put the spotlight on each other mm. so it, it can be known like there are black girls out there that yeah. we are trying to do so much here and um we're not tokens like we should all be invited like there's space for everyone yeah mm. there's 100 percent. do you think there's room do not room but do you think there's a cap here like i know we spoke about it briefly off camera at the event mm -hmm. like do you think you will end up continuing your career here or do you think at some point you actually have to go somewhere else to like fully flourish because of like the because of the industry in australia i've been thinking about this really like i don't know i there might be a cap like just mm -hmm. something that like I, if i'm pushing and pushing and pushing and there's no kind of change there might kind of like be a cap there but i feel like as a lifestyle beauty and fashion content creator i think it would be more worthwhile for me to move elsewhere yeah and like i've been thinking about it a lot i was telling you like either go to the middle east or I, I wish London, but that's not going to happen. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, somewhere there just to like really, you know, flourish there, inshallah. Because um, I think down here, there's only so much you could actually do. Yes. Yeah. That's so crazy that yeah. that's just kind of like the reality of what it is like to be like a, um, a creative or a, a content creator here. Yeah. How do you think you would... Like, would you still prioritize building here and building somewhere else at the same time? Or, like, do you, f do you really feel like it's just kind of, like, a cut-off um, situation? I'm not saying it in, like, kind of a, like, oh, Australia's, like, a halas, like, yeah. done mm -hmm. out. Like, there's no need, there's no point. Or, like, I don't appreciate the audience here. I don't appreciate the community here yeah. or anything like that. I think that um, we, as black women, have, like, in this industry have really broken through a lot of barriers so we've done a lot of groundwork down here mm -hmm. and we should be proud of it yeah, and we'll, like i hope other girls in the community see that and like also help us out and mm. like come through and are encouraged to do the same mm. um and inshallah like they go even like higher and yeah. stuff like that mm. but i'm saying it more like i feel like it might be the end of the chapter down here yeah. and then for me to open there but I've all, I'll always still have like obviously mm. an Australian thing yeah because I'm Australian, Australian and what's called my family is mostly here yeah and there's so much I feel like there's so much like um like you said like audience and followers mm -hmm. and mm. opportunity in the way of like what what you can do and like the influence that you can have here I think the issue is the industry is mm. like so it limits slow. you. Slow. Yeah, that's what like, it is. It's very, it's very slow. Yeah, because there's so much opportunity. I feel like yeah. it's the opposite, where it's like just because we're we're all starting, and there's like there's so much room here, whereas mm. somewhere else, like you know, the UK or America, it's, it's like saturated. you're kind of very yeah. saturated. But it's just so hard when there's no like institutions like built or proper like comms or mm. media. Yeah. it's just not here. Or if it's here, it's built specifically for a specific type of content mm. creator yeah. it's mm. not even built for a specific type of content creator i feel like they're not consciously trying to tap in yeah. to see yeah. what the rest of the world is doing but yeah. like even like you know we've spoken to other people other creators and i would say this to pe to like our audience it is really beneficial for you to build here as well because you can like there's not much competition you can really grow in australia but i think eventually you might have to take it somewhere else if you do want to see yourself like if you see this is kind of like your be all end all or if you see mm -hmm. like there's more work for you to do it's not always gonna yeah it's it's a little bit behind here and mm -hmm. it just makes it's sense for behind. you to like there take is it away. so much room for growth yeah. there's so much opportunities we just have to like literally open the doors. Yes, That's which all can be really exhausting sometimes. Mm. But very, very. Mm. Anyway, sis, you're killing it. We love to see it, and Thank I feel you. like a lot of girls like look up to you, look up to what you're doing, and can see themselves in you. Mm -hmm. Like see see that if you've done it especially for like young black girls living here you girls can do it too you know yeah. honestly that's yeah. all i want like i'm dying for like other black girls to like come through mm. and you know be in the same kind of spaces go to the same kind of events and so we can like enjoy it all together yeah mm. it's just always been my kind of goal to like get people that look like me mm. in those kind in of that spaces. space mm. yeah i love it mm. let's get into our topics for the day so i wanted to talk about getting married young 
Mm. I know you're married. Yeah. Yes. And the conversation came from like just multiple conversations that we've mm -hmm. had together on the podcast with my friends where there's like obviously the pressure of getting married before you turn 30, like especially as a woman, as an African woman. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that pressure will eat you up. Like it really kind of um, consumes people because it's constant, you know? Yeah. And for me, like, I feel like at a certain age, I was like, no, I want to get married when I'm in. I want those things like marriage, kids, all that stuff to happen for me when I'm in my 30s. Mm -hmm. And that's just because of, I guess, like what I prioritize or I don't know. It could be different. Like you might tell me that it, you could still do all those things and be married. Be married. But like yeah. for me, I was always like, yeah, like I feel like I have so much to learn about myself. Um, you know, I, things like I want to travel. I don't want to be thinking of someone and having to like mm -hmm. really tie myself down to like kids and all that if I still want to like discover things in life so yeah. for me personally I felt like yeah I, there was no pressure for my from myself to get married mm -hmm. too young and my mm -hmm. parents were actually pretty chill they were like you know I think Habisha parents are pretty chill now they're kind of like now hello because I'm 20 I'm turning oh. 28 this year Damn. and my dad's like the other day my dad's like what's what's happening like what's happening <laughs> and I was like what do you mean he's like when are you getting married like what is what's going on I'm like what do you mean dad we're just gonna because all of me and my sisters like no one's like you know close to getting married right now yeah and he was just like what's happening and I'm like what do you mean we're just gonna chill with you for the rest of our lives like we're just gonna have he's like please he's please like, just get out of my life what i used to tell my dad all like, the time what do you mean all of us like it'll be so much fun dad forever like, all of us forever and he's like no please wrap it up um anyway so i went on reddit as i do and i was looking up like pros and cons of getting married um young and mm -hmm. then people started replying so i want to go through the replies and then i want to get you guys to kind of give me your Sweet. take so first one was like pro i was 20 he was 25 best thing having kids at 22 they got to college when I'm 40 and I'll still be so young mm. um, also since we grew up together we have a lot in common uh, due to our shared experiences also shared finances also makes life a lot easier that was mm -hmm. a pro cons mm. they didn't get to graduate early because they had they didn't get to graduate because they married and had kids mm. someone says pros we're both fairly non-social people and have each other's alibis when it comes to social situations that's not <laughs> <laughs> it sounds cliche, but we're best friends. We know everything about each other and, spread, and pretty much spend all our free time together. Okay. We have had kids early within uh, and are within sight of an empty nest. Um, cons, they can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that like <laughs> sounds so like mad. scary to me. And it also, you're terrifying. together forever. How like maybe like it? trying to have like, free time together. It's See, crazy. this is why I want to hear your take as well. Um, started, I didn't get married young at all i don't think it's young. okay not young but married in your 20s i guess oh, it's okay, not that right. young yeah, but you're, you're in your 20s yeah yeah, yeah. that seems you that seems very young to me <laughs> are you in your 20s <laughs> let's, not talk, uh, let's not talk about that we're, we're all we're all like in our late 20s we can <laughs> late talk 20s really, yeah <laughs> let's stick to that <laughs> <laughs> anyways um so <laughs> Okay, started dating him when I was 18, married at 20, first kid at 24, pros, 34 years with someone I love um, with all my heart and would die for at any time. Mm -hmm. And he's a, the, he's a better person than I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. And cons, I didn't start college <laughs> when I was young. Anyway, okay, this is the last one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pros, stability, no terrible roommate dating experiences from my 20s, um, always having someone to travel with, never needing to find dates for weddings, work events, family occasions. Cons, you're still figuring out who you are and what you want out of life and may develop in different directions. Mm. Harder to pursue individual interests, careers because plans have to work for someone else too. Mm. And then people tend to socialize less and meet fewer new people if they don't go out and date when they're younger. Source, married, early 20s. It's not funny. Divorced in their early 30s. Oh, they divorced yeah. in their early 30s. But that's not early obviously 20s, for divorced. everyone. That yeah. happens a lot. Yeah. It does happen mm -hmm. when people kind of get married, especially the ones that are married at like the really, Teens. really like, yeah, yeah, like straight out of high school yeah. or like, you know, 20s and things like that. So, yeah. guys, give us your take. What's your, what's, what's your take? Let's start with Mona. <laughs> for me, I take it as like this quote by Muhammad Ali. He says, if you're the same person in like 10 years later, you haven't learned anything, you haven't grown, you haven't changed it yeah. and all that. Mm. Uh, it's not verbatim. It, it's just like my take on his quote, right? Um, so if you get married at like 18, you don't even know yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what's going on. Mm. Like you don't even know life. You don't even know 
your you environment or anything, anything, yeah. anything at all. And if you expect to be the same person 10 years later when you're with someone, so a lot of the girls that get married young or the guys even, mm. they realise when they hit 30 and they've got all these kids and they've got a wife or a husband, like all these risk kind of responsibilities and they're like, oh my God, I did not live my life. I don't know myself. Mm. I feel like life has just escaped me. I, I just think that is like the craziest thing ever to get married so young and like not take into the fact that you're not living for yourself. Yeah. Too. Yeah. It's terrifying. And to wake up, imagine waking up when you're 40 and you're like, whoa, I've what just have had, I done? what have I done? Or like, who am I? Yeah. You know, that kind yeah. of freaks me out. It's so crazy because I know people um, that have married straight out of high school. Mm-hmm. So they've been together since like year 11, you know, and have just dated and like, I just that's just mm. it and i agree i think i think it's hard because i know people that are in that situation so like saying something like you know specifically yeah you're not like this or maybe because i really just think it takes a specific relationship to be able to withstand something like that growing together mm-hmm. and all of these things so i think it depends but it's also like you will have to have incredible communication skills but you'd have to be then, like a master like even with all the communication and stuff like that how about like do you want to like you said wake up at 40 and like be like who am i what have i done and all that yeah like why can't pe- this is me being a hater right now yeah <laughs> separate yourself from like your kids lives like you know the guy that said in the pros like um i'll be 40 when my kids are at college mm, and I'll yeah have a, like, yeah Sorry, but kid, I like, need my life my, yeah. for myself. Like as selfish as that sounds, mm. in the what are we in the twenty first or whatever century? Yeah. Um, live for yourself, and then your kids will also have a life for themselves. Yeah. Mm. Why does it? Why do you feel like? Because for me, that sounds like an obligation. Like, okay, yes. I have to have these kids, and then by the time I come out of it, it's like I'm old enough to, I'm still young enough to live a life yeah. and have all this stuff. It, even the one that said. Um, we get to spend we spend all our time together and i'm like just the the idea of a relationship to me is like having someone that is going to be an addition to your life and like Mm -hmm. you guys can grow together do all the things but why is this person your second like second half and why have you not developed your own personality and mm-hmm. sense People of that make self it their entire personality yeah to be in a relationship. it's crazy to me and that's that's why sometimes i feel for me getting married really young can be a problem because you don't give yourself the time or the space to actually like learn who you are learn what you love about yourself what you want you know how they say like you can't love someone unless you love yourself yeah mm-hmm. when you're so young you Guys, just like, let's really think about it. What are the things that we're thinking about when we're young and, you know, people are dating? Yeah. You're not thinking like a grown <laughs> person. Yeah. Thinking, like, we're not thinking you're like, wow, he's really attractive. Really taking it in, she goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, this person's attractive and they're nice to me. And yeah. then that's like, tick, tick, tick. But like, when you're older, there's emotional maturity. There's financial stability. Like, I'm thinking mm-hmm. long term. Yeah. If you're young... And the thing is, I've also seen on the other end where I've got friends, really close friends that got married really young Mm -hmm. and not married young. Sorry, they got into a relationship really young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got married when they were like 25, I want to say. And it's beautiful. They've got they're on their second child. Things are great. So it doesn't not work out all the time. But, you know, for generally, yeah, yeah. there's the other side of it. Yeah, I don't just completely discourage people like getting married, like in their mid 20s or like even like early 20s sometimes like at the end of the day if it's the right person it's the right person Mm. like we can't like completely like cut it off yeah but also just know who you like it's a case by case kind of thing like i've seen some girls like get married and they're like they literally haven't experienced anything in life it's like Mm. like you said straight from either school or their parents home or whatever they've never traveled they've never done anything to actually figure out who they are and Mm. then you see them like with all these kids afterwards Mm. and you see it in their faces and that totally breaks my heart every single time. So sad. Because it is. The woman, like, uh, let's be really for real. I feel like the woman does end up kind of like suffering in in those kind of situations yeah. when they're not happy because like one we're the ones that get pressured to do it yeah. really a man can be 35 and it's like oh yeah he's a bachelor like you know kind of this guy's still good if he's got money this and that people still want him yeah mm-hmm. women it's like you're washed out or you're expired or mm-hmm. you're this mm-hmm. and you're that there's so much of that like going around where people feel so pressured to get it all right and then 
jump into these relationships really early mm. and then end up with people that they they're not happy with or end up in situations that you're not happy with because you rushed like this is your life we get one life yeah and also it's so important to like obviously know who you are yeah. before you step into a relationship with another person because if you don't then it's only going to lead to like conflict and misunderstanding mm. because you're going to feel like anxious and probably insecure about like major aspects of your life so i think having that figured out when you're 18 doesn't make i sense, just don't yeah. think that yeah. that's like i don't think it's possible but mm-hmm. also i think that you can be 35 and still not have it figured exactly. out either yeah. so it really depends on like the type of person that you are and i think on the type of partner that you have and i just think that you need to be every growth experience i've had I've had it on my own, whether that's like consciously leaving a relationship to be on my own and be like, okay, I'm way too codependent. Mm. I rely on other people because I'm just like naturally like shy and awkward and like socially can't be bothered. So if that's me as a person, if I don't actively push myself, then I'm just going to recluse into relying on someone else. Mm -hmm. So I think especially if you're, like introverted in that way and and it's like that what that person said on the reddit post Mm. and they're like yeah we don't really like social socializing so it's so good to be married so he can always be my excuse Mm. it's like are you you need to grow Mm. yeah (laughs) like um so i think like i don't think you should look at your partner as your like comfort zone it should be like you know they they grow with you and all those they things. should add to your life yeah. and not be your whole entire whole life. thing. Yeah, 100%. Like, I feel like you need to be on your... Like, um, what was it? This is a really bad example. Mm. Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not really Will bad Smith. Example. Will Smith and Jada. <laughs> but yeah. he was... Um, they were talking about something like, you can't make anyone happy, right? Yeah. Happiness is like... It's, it's a feeling. It mm. goes up and down and stuff like that. You can't actually be someone's happiness. They have to be happy themselves. Mm. So even in a relationship, like you cannot be someone's ev- like everything yeah, yeah. all the time. And what do they say? Women always are the ones like in a marriage, like when women get married, they lose out more because mm-hmm. pregnancy, body, mm-hmm. um, financially, they will have to take some yeah. time off and all that stuff. And even like socially and all that stuff, yeah. they can't do everything. That and they emotionally, can, like men, emotionally, emotional exactly, labor, number one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> men are the ones that actually flourish yeah. mm-hmm. in marriages they end up earning more. They end up having more stability. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're more focused and mm-hmm. all that. So I want women to actually like go into marriages, like actually like having their head screwed on, yes. like not thinking like all oh, airy fairy love. No. Yeah. We, we're going to get into that conversation <laughs> as well, because that's like 100%. You can't let your feelings guide you mm-hmm. every single time, but we want to hear about you and obviously you're married. So for you, how old were you when you got married? Uh, 28. 28, okay. So, oh yeah, you were like, it's a good age. It's kind of like not too young, but it's still in your 20s. Do you feel like you were, yeah, like I guess the whole talking about knowing yourself and this and that, you felt like you were ready to do all of that? I feel like um, I met someone that I knew that, okay, I don't always feel like I'm like halas done, like I'm the perfect version of myself right there's always room to grow there's always um space for more knowledge and all that stuff so i found someone that i could grow with Mm. right and like i've i feel like back in the day if i were to ever be in a relationship or thinking about marriage and stuff like that i thought of it as like oh the everything in my life like that was like the peak Mm. for me but now it's just an addition it's just a it's a part of me Mm. but it's not my entire being Mm. like i don't know how How do you know that makes a lot of sense because i think for me like there's also this like anxiety sometimes that i get with the idea of like getting married because there's so many things i want to achieve in life and sometimes Mm -hmm. i feel like okay once i decide to do this Mm -hmm. obviously like live in australia i do this but i'm someone who loves to travel i'm someone who likes to you know think kind of big picture when it's like even career wise where i can go and i feel like there are other women out there like that too that feel maybe getting married will too early might tie you down so how do you find like obviously you're someone that's very um like you've got a creative career you've got someone you're pretty ambitious Mm -hmm. so like 
how does that work? Like finding someone where you're like, okay, this this person meets my needs, understands what I want to do, mm-hmm. and we we yeah, like we can kind of compromise in that way. I was kind of lucky in that sense because when I was friends with him for a very long time, like before um, we got married, uh, before we decided to have like that kind of conversation and start um, mm-hmm. really getting to know each other. So he kind of like saw that growth. So okay. he was always like in my you know corner, like encouraging me and all that stuff. So I feel like if it was anyone else, they wouldn't really understand the hard work that I've done and why it means so much to me Mm. and like working hard towards my goals and stuff like that. Traveling is also a massive thing for me. I've been traveling since I was like 17. And for me, it's like anything that I did at my parents' house, I should be allowed to do. Like like there there shouldn't be any kind of like... limitations obviously things kind of change a bit mm. like i used to travel for like three four months at a time yeah clearly can't, can't do, do that, that anymore yeah. <laughs> yeah. but i don't see that as a limitation yeah. i see that as just like trying to work oh. with someone so like i was saying like finding someone that is able to understand you and not limit your growth is the most important thing yeah and that's kind of like how i was thinking about it when i was thinking about getting married like in my early 20s that's not what i was thinking about like mm. yeah i could you know, leave this whole thing for him. No, no, sis. Don't yeah. Do, don't do, do you do That's you it. have like one piece of do, one thing that you wish people told you before you got married, um, or before you made that decision? Before I made that decision, I feel like I already like I was at a good age to like really think about it for myself. Mm. I don't. It wasn't really that hard of a transition, to be honest. Mm, okay. <laughs> I, I I really wish I could say something, but um, but now yeah. that you're in it and yeah. it's like okay, this is life. Like I'm I've I've I'm married. I've got my partner. Mm-hmm. Like, is there anything that has come up, or is it just kind of like you know business as usual, but with a bit more, you know, obviously responsibility. I wouldn't say business as usual because you still need to take a whole other human into consideration. Mm, yeah. And and it's just all about balancing your responsibilities as well as communication, mm. communication, communication, communication. Can't yeah. even stress that enough. Like any time um, someone has um, what's it called some feelings, just communicate. Like let your part, like making sure they're on the journey with you, yeah. and you're not just doing it on, on your own. And like they're just like in a, like in just just, hopping yeah. in the car. No, not the case. Yeah, I don't even drive on top of it. <laughs> She pulled up an Uber. <laughs> no, I love that. And you know, you don't have kids, do you? No, no. I think that's a good point as well. Because sometimes mm. it's like that whole back to back when things happen. Just the whole like high school, oh, uni, yeah. marriage, kids. And I think mm. that's really nice that you can be married and not have to like jump right into having children. And I think that's a conversation you need to have with your partner before like you know you commit i think a lot of a lot of guys might want that a lot of girls are thinking like i've got a whole life that i still want to live i know like i have people in my life cousins friends who want to like who are married but Mm -hmm. still like have bought a house have done that but uh like i want to get married i want to travel before i have kids i want to like live life before i commit to like being a whole mother you know no 100 that was a conscious decision like i was like i'm gonna actually continue you know traveling with my partner making sure i get that like enjoy all of that obviously travel with the kids too but Mm. it's gonna obviously be different it's gonna be different i hate the people that say it's gonna be the same no it's It's not not. it's not you're lying to yourself whoever's (laughs) saying whoever's saying that is crazy um we want to move on to our next topic and Mm -hmm. it's similar to this and similar to the things that we've been saying but the importance of picking a partner Mm -hmm when you get married, like picking your life partner, whether it's you get married or not, I, th- I don't think we understand enough like how that how important that decision is. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people get into situations, get into relationships and kind of, again, like just are, are rushed quick to just like get into something and don't actually think about the long term of like what that person will be, like how much that person will impact your life in the long term. Mm -hmm. So for example, how we were saying before, like sometimes just it's not always about your feelings. It's about there's there was a quote on Instagram that I saw and it was like um something about make sure you're like it's just like you need to practice your why am I stuttering? (laughs) It's like making sure your mind is stronger than your emotions or your Mm -hmm. feelings. Mm -hmm. And I was like that's so true because sometimes you know we're too like in the clouds too excited we love this person we can see this potential the life and blah 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 but then you start realizing like okay they're not maybe emotionally mature they don't 
have are they like showing you that they're financially mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. responsible or like do you guys even like are your lives aligned like do mm. you feel like in five ten years you can see this person like do you have the same values yeah and we just jump in mm-hmm. so i wanted to ask you guys like what you thought about the importance of picking a partner oh it's like obviously the biggest decision yeah. that you would make like in your whole life yeah because it's like not just you it's also like potentially if you decide to have kids like that's a whole other thing yeah. that you should because this is going to be the person that's going to be like raising your kids with you but i think like it's so much easier said than done because so many people are always like make sure your values align make sure that like he's they're a good communicator make sure that like um you're able like your best friends and all of these things but i think it's you can't find that person as they are you're always you're you're gonna meet someone you're gonna connect Mm. and then you're going to have to be like intentional and conscious of all the things that you have to do to make a relationship actually work so i think it's like when it's the importance of picking your partner you can pick anyone as long as you know they they're base they're basically a good person and you (laughs) like them and you love them but all the other stuff comes with time and really so you don't think it just comes as like the person obviously you're not going to get a full package you can't see the you can't see the whole picture not when you first meet someone because i think the hard parts of a relationship are the really subtle like very not in your face at all problems that someone has and everyone has problems like obviously no one's perfect Mm. so it's the things that it's like okay maybe they're like weirdly sensitive about Mm -hmm. this random thing Mm -hmm. that you said Mm -hmm. that has not ever occurred to you it's not even in your ballpark of like the problem now yeah exactly it might be a factor it might grow to other things exactly so i think like you have to be aware and patient of that because once you get past and the honeymoon period could last years Mm -hmm. but once you start to actually really like fight like not cute fights Mm -hmm. but it's like shit is like we're actually in the trenches right now i think that's when you actually find out whether someone's for you or not Mm -hmm. and you should never feel like trapped in a situation either Mm -hmm. if you get to that point and you're like oh maybe this isn't it but i see so many tiktoks and stuff of people being like you have to choose your partner every single day like every day you have to like choose them and work yeah Yeah. so i don't know i think it's just very important to choose the right partner but it's important to understand and think about all the work that comes after Mm. to grow them and grow yourself 100 percent. you got to remember that it's hard work like you said working every single day Mm. um as a muslim for me it like you tick all your boxes like i want this i want that i want that i want Mm -hmm. that right all the things that you want covered Mm. non-negotiables like non-negotiables all that and then um obviously if there's compatibility and all that and then we have this thing called isikhara where you pray like to god about it and you both have to pray about it and then you see as things go sometimes there are signs that show you sometimes they're not but it's not like in a superstitious kind of way like yeah you leave it to god basically. yeah yeah you just leave it to god at that point and if it works out it works out if it's not it's not then it's not good for you yeah mm-hmm. so you ask god like if it's good for me bring it closer if it's not yes yeah yeah. Anyway. yeah. so that's yeah. kind of like what i did and i just left it to god after that um but obviously you tie your camel first mm-hmm. and make sure like everything that you want is in that person yeah. and obviously leave room for the future and things that like aren't immediate right now you're thinking of like growth Mm. and all that Mm. it's so hard i i get what you guys are saying i do but i feel like there are things that you can like pick out early like there are things where it's like like not even characteristic but maybe the values like you realize okay yeah he's a hard-working man and this and this but you know is he savvy in thinking about like the things that I want in my life? So mm-hmm. I've I've been I've been like in situations and I'm like, okay, this person isn't really um like there's they don't Switched really on. care to val yeah, they're yeah. not sweet. I love it. We're having a great time, really lovely person, but you're not like what's your plan? What's your goal? What are we doing? Ambitions. You're not ambitious enough for me. And sometimes that's just the person. Yeah. And I think you need to be able to be like this is not for me and that's what i mean by like okay your feelings might be invested and you might love this person but you need to step back and yeah. think about it i think women are always again the ones that end up like suffering because we look at it and we're too 
we're too like emotional sometimes and we think about all the investment we've made as yeah. well yeah and sometimes it's easier to walk away what's the saying it's like would you rather would you rather walk away at three years or walk away at like 10 yeah. years or something like that mm-hmm. i don't know if it goes like that but it's along those lines <laughs> yeah no, no, I, I it's like don't don't like be be realistic like you know what you like you know mm-hmm. what you want like once he ticks all the the, bo- the right boxes just really think about is this the type of person i want to be with long yeah. term and then you see men they don't care about 10 years of it. if they want to walk they will walk they away will walk away and hence like all those emotions. stories about their fathers going to the, the you know, so nook nook bar, <laughs> and just like never coming back that's literally how it is it's like so sad we think about all the investment and if there's kids we're thinking about that and all that stuff but if men want to switch off they can switch off have you seen the tyler perry movie acrimony that 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 I made did. me burn in my soul tyler perry movie he really i don't know if tyler perry has it out for black women i'm not sure he really does but what's going on why are these stories so cruel (laughs) she she um she stand she stood by this man for Mm -hmm. 17 or 18 years so it started off she she met him during uni Mm -hmm. and was kind of like whatever you know wasn't really interested but then he found his way to making himself she she fell in love with him yeah and then she has like an anger problem and one day she went to his little caravan house that he was living in and she sees him like cheating on her so she drove into the caravan mm. and she basically couldn't have kids after that it was a serious accident oh. it was so dramatic what, what anyways what's wrong with that she, Perry? i don't even know and then turns out this guy had this invention this whole time during uni he was a genius really yeah. really smart he would help her in school all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and it was this project that he was trying to like he was going to make millions out of it mm-hmm. anyways she stood by him and then 18 years later she's just like just destroyed you know just tired worn down just Mm -hmm. working two jobs and this man is still talking about his project and his invention and how he's working on it and he's working on it yeah and you kind of just it just takes you through the journey of the emotional labor and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. she ends up leaving him because she thought he was cheating again he didn't even fight for her back really by the time he, he tried for like a second anyway he didn't he ended up his project kind of blew up so he became a millionaire, obviously multi-millionaire. Mm-hmm. What did he do? He goes back to the woman he initially cheated on That's and great. gave her everything that he promised he'd give his wife. And he paid the wife off like 10 million, but she was like, uh, I, I was with you all this time. Mm-hmm. Like I literally, I, you know, how did you just walk away from that? And I feel like, I don't know, Tyler Perry is a bit crazy. That's extreme, but yeah. it just gives you a glimpse of like, I feel like men are quick to be like, all right, it's fine. Like, you know, not all men, but yeah. you can get like the emotional kind of, they just switch off sometimes. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm, what I'm trying to say is we need to be a little bit more logical. You might love someone, yeah, but love, you have to love can wear that. off sometimes when you get a bit tired. You love know? isn't a constant feeling. Yeah. You've got to like the person. Mm, I 100% yeah. uh, agree on that. But I feel like love is a feeling that goes in and out like so you go into like intense love mm. and then you got to like the person you got to tolerate not tolerate them but you got to just like being around mm, the person yeah. um but love is a f- like you can love someone mm. but you can also have issues and mm. other things that arise from it. like it doesn't mm. take away from it and there's always going to be like shitty moments and times but i think like the strength that's why it's so important to pick the right person yeah. in that mm-hmm yeah we'll leave that one there but yeah like i I think again just think think twice before you just jump i into just think there's no rush there's no rush like what you're rushing for mm. and this goes right perfectly into our last segment and our dilemma mm-hmm. for um for the day for this episode one mm-hmm. of the girls say hi bittersweet girls how do you get over comparing yourself to others i'm 26 and starting to feel the pressure of adulting example moving out buying a house getting married etc i can't help but feel like i'm a bit behind can you give me some advice mm. what a perfect segue it's a perfect <laughs> it, ma- it makes so much sense with yeah. the, with what we're talking about uh so it's like pressure yeah com- comparison and pressure i think like everyone it's it's the standard advice that people always say is like don't compare yourself to others mm-hmm. obviously and like focus on your own journey and things like that but i don't think i can sit and be like i've never felt that before like mm-hmm. everyone feels that before and when you're in that state it can be really impossible to kind of like yourself Mm -hmm. out of it but i would just say like from my experience everyone always goes through like ups and downs in their progression in Mm -hmm. life it's like you might think that you're 
friend is successful with her business um, but she might be stressed because she doesn't have a relationship Mm -hmm. or they might have a relationship but they're upset because they don't have a house like I feel like we're always feel we always feel like we're lacking something Mm -hmm. even when we're like succeeding the most Mm -hmm. it's crazy and you might feel that high of like success for a week and then just be like (laughs) like just crash yeah you know so it's like it's never it's not a consistent thing life is never ever yeah on like one exactly Mm. it's It's always up and down i feel like social media is a huge 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 factor into this mm-hmm. obviously we have hubbish parents that yeah. always like uh this uh, daughter <laughs> is doing your something like so yeah, this, your cousin's doing this why aren't you doing that obviously but social media i feel like i just want to remind girls like okay if you see anyone's profile mine or anything mm. why the hell would i show you if i'm having a bad day yes. why? like why the hell yeah. would i show you if i'm fighting with my husband or like mm. it's not realistic i'm going to show you the best parts of mm. me that i want to show mm. of obviously yeah right it could be like minor little stuff like if i'm going through like weight fluctuating or whatever okay if i show you that right mm. but comparing yourself to someone that you see online or anywhere really is mm. really dangerous like at the end of the day you're only in a race with yourself yeah and comparison is a thief of, of joy, joy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what, what do they say um i think it's it st- it stunts you yeah it stunts your growth as a person Obviously, we all experience it. Mm. Like, it's just very human to be like, oh, but okay, we're in the kind of same level and this person's doing this, but I haven't done this, da da da. But at the end of the day, the more you think about other people, the less time you're actually thinking about putting energy into yourself. Yeah, yeah. putting energy into yourself and energy into your growth and in your relationships and your family and everything else, really. Mm. 100% I agree with both of you guys and I feel like we all get to that like this girl's 26 and I think Mm -hmm. that mid 20s to like your 30s is that time where you start to really feel the pressure Mm because outside of other people around you doing it we've always been told that like this is the time where you're buying property or you're you know you know you're dating and like you're going to get married it feels like this weird like you know, it has, if it hasn't happened for you, which I, I wanted to get the statistics because I feel like yeah. it's more people that it hasn't happened for than it has. Yeah. You, like all the things yeah. of like me ticking all the boxes. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's realistic to like, obviously it's it's good to like strive for, for greatness and things like that. But I just don't think putting the pressure on yourself because it's just not realistic. Like yeah. not everyone is meeting those goals. So mm-hmm. I think like you said, don't compare yourself to other people and just... um like take your time like i think if you're putting in the work and you're focused on what your goals are like it will happen for you some people obviously they get lucky or they get things done faster or anything like that but you don't know like she said the things that happen uh to get there like the Mm. stuff that they went through to get there Mm. it doesn't all have to be like really hard or whatever some people just just have life sorted like that right but if that's not you and how your life has run the whole time, you cannot expect to be running on other people's timing. Mm. Just do the groundwork. Just do the, literally do the groundwork. It was Issa Ray. Like, I don't know if you guys, do you know Issa? Yeah. She was with her friends and she was talking about how, cause someone was like, what advice would you give people? And she was like, oh, you know, just chill out. Like chill the fuck out. Because <laughs> when I was, when she was, she, she had friends that were like, she had a friend that came from Ethiopia. She was doing like a, um, like international development stuff out there another friend that was a lawyer another friend that was doing this and then they were like oh so you know they had dinner and they were talking about what they were doing obviously they just had they have really huge successful careers and she was like you know i just posted my last video on youtube like (laughs) it's like and she was so like awkward and embarrassed about it and then um at the time they were like obviously like girls hyping each other up like yes Mm. yes you post the video but then she's like it was just the consistency and mm-hmm. like look at her now she's got like production companies and exactly. this and that it's not to say like your goal is that but if you do the groundwork mm-hmm. and you just focus on your goals like it will happen yeah. is what and I'm trying to say what harm is it like is gonna is there anything gonna like if you're just focusing on yourself it's only gonna lead to good things mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. honestly if you put yeah, put the energy do the groundwork at the end of the day you'll get to where you're going to get to. And if you don't, you'll get to something better, hopefully. Exactly, exactly. Everything happens on its own timing. Like the steps I take aren't the steps, same steps you're going to mm-hmm. take or you're going to take. Mm-hmm. We each have different um, lanes. Mm. Stick to it. Period. Yeah, and there's so much like, uh, it's, it's such an attractive quality to be secure in what you're doing mm. and like who you are. So if you're worried about how other people are perceiving you as maybe behind in life because i think a a big another part of it is 
perception mm. yeah. like where you're thinking oh my yeah. god i'm just a friend who's just you know but if you're just like no i'm doing my thing like i'm working on my own stuff mm -hmm. my priorities are this 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 and i'm just like quietly working on them then mm. no one can really say any yeah. anything to you it's beautiful like, yeah. if anything like you yeah. the fact that you know who you are yeah. and mm. you're trying to figure out yourself is a lot nicer and a lot like mm -hmm. like you said it's very admirable uh, yeah. yeah and it's a, you know you you feel like when you give people too much space to have an opinion over what you're doing when you're like oh yeah i'm just like yeah you know working it That's out it. Da, 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 like automatically people have now that space to come in and mm -hmm. yes and like put up whatever like um judgment it is whether it's mm -hmm. good or bad it's mm -hmm. it's now open for them but if you're like like you said confident it's just a very different vibe you give off and people take a step back yeah but, like for example for me i don't necessarily like to think about what other people are doing in the same industry or yeah. anything like that but online obviously it gives the space for like all these like kind of people to always comment like when are you having kids when are you mm. doing this when are you th or before i was married when are you getting married everyone else is getting married yeah. right but not allowing them to enter that space is, I feel like, the most important thing. Yeah. Like, whether they like, like, they can yap all they want. Mm. It's just not going to enter it's my not gonna, personal yeah. space. I saw your I saw your Q and A the other day. Oh, I didn't you cracked me up. You were like, um, um. Someone was like, w w "When are you going to uh, have when kids?" You, you and know, like, when are you going to get married? And I said, "I've been married for like two years, and I have nine nine kids." kids. What <laughs> do you mean? And then someone else asked me, "Oh, do you um, did you inherit those kids?" Like, th was it your husband's kids? And I literally was going to be like, yeah, he had five. I had like three. But I was like, <laughs> I just let me <laughs> no, I yeah. was like, you're too cute. Like, I'm you, not have to, you have to like, that's good. You like, just got to like, just let it like water off a duck's back. Like, yeah. honestly, at the end of the day, people are just going to talk. They don't actually know you. Mm -hmm. And they're going to talk anyway. So literally. just like, don't give it the energy that it, need, it doesn't mm -hmm. need. So yeah. yeah, we'll leave this episode here, guys. It was so nice having you on. It's Thank like talking to a to a sister. Oh, honestly, honestly it we was need to bring you back on. It was very comfy. Love everything you guys are doing. We love that. You guys might see her again on the show, guys. She needs hey. to redeem herself. With oh these. no, redeem you need herself. to redeem yourself. <laughs> you see, <laughs> what we're talking about staying in your own lane. Yeah, <laughs> look, guys. I'm not going to say anything. We're going to leave it here. <laughs> we'll see you guys again next week. Where can see people ya. find you? Um, Mona Khalifa XO underscore on TikTok, but Mona Khalifa XO on um, Insta and I think Snapchat too. All right. Perfect. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See ya.